Welcome to the Gorgeous Gray Podcast. I am Nicole Scott, your host, registered holistic nutritionist, rest mindset coach, author of the Gorgeous Gray Movement, and the co-creator of the Menopause Reset Program. In this podcast, we have real conversations about aging as a woman and all the pressure and uncertainty we feel as we head into menopause and beyond. Let's face it, aging is not an easy conversation to have, but I say it's time to talk about the messy middle and offer hope when we feel like giving up on ourselves. Let's talk about our fears around gray hair, our muffin tops, and even our dry, itchy vaginas and everything in between. I will help you reconnect to your feminine energy and offer real solutions from experts in their field to navigate aging as a woman. I believe we, as women, deserve to shine even brighter in this next chapter of life. So with a sense of humor and a lot of compassion, let's dive into these vulnerable conversations. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode from the Gorgeous Gray Podcast. I have a very special friend of mine and mentor, Jen Pike. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. We've been chatting for like 20 minutes. <laughs> we have. I know. So much to catch up on. Uh, this episode, we are going to dive in and answer a lot of your questions around what kind of tests do I need to consider when um, I'm confused about how I'm feeling in my body and what my doctor says about my tests? So a lot of women that follow me that are in menopause, that are frustrated, that are like, you know, my hair is falling out, my muffin top's not going away, my energy is low, my doctor says, I'm fine, my test results look good. Jen Pike is an expert in this field and she's gonna really help shed some light on really the different tests that are available, the steps that you could start to take um, and help you start to empower you. Cause really to me, testing is about empowerment, but mm -hmm. let me give you a little bit of uh, information about who Jen Pike is. So we go way back almost, I feel like 20 years. She graduated from nutritional school a little bit before me background in um, uh, exercise and um, athleticism and she's an, an athlete, a yoga teacher. She had her own studio in Keswick where she, I think, I don't know, mentored and had what over 20 some staff where she had this boutique center and we really hooked up then when um, she was bringing in some of our wellness products that um, she was sharing with her clients and our relationship started to build from there. And what I love about Jen is um, she's not afraid of change. And I saw this beautiful woman decide to go from brick and mortar, shut it down and go online. And it was probably one of the most scariest moments for you, for your family. But then to do that and then see your beautiful brand and business um, explode and help thousands and thousands of women around the world with your message of simplicity. Mm -hmm. So you can find her on um, podcast, which is Simplicity Sessions, The Simplicity Sessions. You can find her on Instagram, Jen Pike. She's in her stories every single day. You will know about her life. She's very <laughs> open and vulnerable, which I love about her. Um, she's the real deal and she's very smart and she's done her homework and research and she's also functional, a functional practitioner. So she can actually understand the testing as well. And she's got a beautiful team that surrounds her to really help with her mission and vision. So Jen, I'm so grateful that you are here um, to dive into this conversation. Yeah, thank you for having me here. It's it's really important because, you know, what we're going to talk about today, unfortunately, isn't the same kind of conversation uh, or time and depth that a woman is going to experience when she goes to her doctor or even her OBGYN, um, you know, sometimes even her natural health practitioner, just depending on what their area of specialty is or the amount of time that they have in that appointment. So it's a really important talk to be having. 
Yeah. And just an FYI, because I get this all the time. Does she have silver? Is she gray? Is she part of the movement? So you can see that. Yes, she yes, is. She is. <laughs> and uh, you can go back to my YouTube channel on gorgeous gray and uh, actually hear her, her full story. She has shared it a few times over the years about the, you know, why doing it. So, but that's not what we want to talk about. But yes, I know you guys always ask me that because <laughs> you're listening and you can't see. Is it the so qualifier just... <laughs> for the guests? We have to have the gray. No, I've got it. No, it sure isn't. But <laughs> I know that my guests like that part of it too. If it, It's just a bonus. That's all. So uh, Jen, let's have that conversation. Um, so there's, let's say you have a woman and she's in her forties and this woman is going to be this gonna woman's gonna be like me, my my um, what do you call it? Um, Your journey. Yeah, forty five, just you know, divorced, lots of stress in her life, and all of a sudden things start to change in her body. Mm -hmm. She's gaining weight. Um, she's got low energy. Uh, she goes to the doctor. The doctor says everything checks out here, so there's nothing to worry about. This is just part of you know the aging process. Let's let's dive into that conversation. What do you say to a woman who has left the doctor's office, her head's down, she's feeling hopeless, and she's like, I don't even know where to begin. So the first um, question that I would have for her is tell me more. Mm -hmm. To be quite honest, uh, it is, you know, we'll describe our symptoms as low energy, not sleeping great, anxiety, stress, we can feel and see the visible weight gain. Usually for women, it's they're going to say it's around my waist, my bra is not doing up the way it used to my clothes aren't fitting how they used to I feel puffy. And I think it's so important, even before we think about the testing side of it is to really pay attention to the symptoms, which are the messages from our body. And I really encourage women to actually just start to keep a, a record of that. And you know, note it down, not something where you have to be over analytical, but literally just making a note so that you can start to recognize these patterns because in our mid 40s, and, and this is, you know, you're talking about it at 45, I'm 43, there could be a woman listening in her late 30s, there could be a woman in her late 40s and her early 50s who's going to connect with this. Um, so our age doesn't necessarily determine when we may have symptoms like this. But it's starting to notice, oh, you know, I don't feel like this every day, but there are certain times a month where, oh my gosh, I fit that to a bill. Or I'm in a season in my life right now, like you described, you had just gone through a divorce. There was a lot of change and transition happening and your body was like, yeah, we're also going to change and transition at the exact same time, right, as part of that. So I think noting it is really important and listen to your body when she talks to you, because this is where you really do need to be able to go into any in, you know appointment that you're having empowered and educated about yourself, not like busting the door down and being like, look, I have researched all of this. This is what I think is going on. Probably won't end well with your practitioner, but really knowing like, this is how I used to feel. This is what was normal for me. This is how, I, this is not my norm. I understand that I'm aging. I understand things are changing hormonally. My life is not the same but I'm not subscribing to like, I'm destined to feel like this now because those things have happened. So I think that's really important first. The other thing is that when we talk about having, you know, if you go into your family doctor, Nicole, and you say, I would like to get a full blood test done. And those are the words you use. I would like a full blood test. It's really important to understand that to that doctor, a full blood test is what is provided and covered through the health system of your government. So for us in Canada, it's through OHIP. It is also different provincially. So depending on the province that you live in, if you're listening and you live in the US, that's going to be governed state to state. And then you also have extended benefits that would be covered if you have health care, whether it's a plan from your company or you have uh, an HSA if you're an entrepreneur health spending account. So there's different metrics we're looking at. That doctor, when you say full blood, is going to give you the basic. So here's the thing, the term flood or full blood work means basic. <laughs> so that's step one in understanding is that 
And I think one of the markers I talk about often in this for women is that if you suspect you have a thyroid issue, your hair is thinning and falling out, your skin is dry, you're gaining weight, you're cold all the time, you're not sleeping well, you're constipated, you have heart palpitations, you know, a lot of the things that we can confuse with, you know, perimenopause or hormonal changes, and you go in and say to your doctor, I would like to test my thyroid. What they're going to test is something called TSH, which is your thyroid stimulating hormone that is part of the picture of our thyroid, but it is not coming from the thyroid gland. It's coming from the pituitary in our brain, which gives the signal, it's the thyroid stimulating, it's signaling to the thyroid gland to produce your thyroid hormones. And then there's a secondary step of converting those and so on and so forth. So again, it's like we go in and we think we're getting our thyroid tested your levels will come back. And if you come back within what the Western medical reference range is, when, when someone tells you a practitioner you're working with says, everything's normal, what that means is you're not too low and you're not too high, you're kind of right in the range. And so that to us is normal. There's no room for concern. Now, determining that is really important to understand because that range with thyroid it's a bit of a smaller window so you know western medicine for them it's like if you are under 4.5 you're fine <laughs> um in functional medicine we're looking for anything that is between one and two as being healthy anything below one is now giving us indication of being hyper anything above two is waving its hand and saying i'm starting to get sluggish anything above four we are in there and essentially working with your body as though you have an underactive thyroid issue that's going on or it's hyperstimulation or hypo on a brain level which is where your nervous system is a big part of this if we have a woman who, you know, she has the heart palpitation, she has hives, she is, you know, has anxiety, she has all of these other symptoms going on, she has strong histamine responses, like she's saying, certain foods I eat now, I get congested right away, I can't have that glass of wine anymore like I used to, um, I wake up puffy the next day. I have allergies I never used to have before at different times of the season, you know, different things like that. We're going to be looking at testing her antibodies to rule out Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune form of an underactive thyroid. But for the woman who's going in and just saying, please test my TSH, she can have every single sign and symptom of a thyroid issue. And if the doctor sees on the paper that she's falling in the range that they deem to be normal, she is sent off either with, you're fine, everything is okay. Maybe you just need, you know, like to meditate or to go for a walk or, you know, just de-stress in your life. Um, or, or, what she is told is, well, we could look at an antidepressant. Um, I want to share a couple stories here. So young 16 year old, this is a friend of mine's daughter, and she just sent me um, the blood work and thyroid was uh, 8.0, the TSH. Mm. And the medical doctor said, you will be on thyroid medication for the rest of your life. So this to the 16 year old daughter. So that was one just recent story of just like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, right? Mm -hmm. Didn't even test for anything else, right? Um, and then the other one was my mom. My mom, same thing, went to the medical doctor. Her TSH was in normal range, but she wasn't feeling great. And she definitely had signs of an autoimmune condition, but it took her four years to find a practitioner and to be conscious about it. And she found a practitioner down in Mexico but when they finally did the full thyroid panel and not just TSH, her antibodies was over 400. Yeah. And I've worked with women who are in the thousands. Wow. And 400 is high. Cause let's, let's, so we're going to talk about both these stories. Cause this happens all the time. Yeah. So with your mom, um, when the antibodies like so there's two that we measure specific to the thyroid there's thyroid peroxidase which will be tpo and there's thyroglobulin which will be tgab on your blood work if you look at the ranges they'll say like anything between 20 and 40 for tpo and anything between like 35 and 50 for tgab is fine you want to see both of those respectively under 15 and under 20. So anything above that is again, it's flashing yellow light. It's caution, caution. We're starting with uh, what an autoimmune condition means. And there's hundreds of different autoimmune conditions. Hashimoto's is specific to the thyroid tissue. With Hashimoto's, what's happening is and this is a slow brew. You don't go to bed on a Wednesday and wake up on a Thursday with 
Hashimoto's. This has been happening for years in, a, in someone's body, and it is more prevalent in women tenfold than it is in men, but it's possible in men. So this is, you have been, you know, living a life of servitude, doing for others, dismissing how you're feeling, sacrifice, 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 unstable blood sugar, probably digestive issues that were going on, lots of bloating, gas, constipation, diarrhea, but just like you can still get by and manage, you know, different things going on in life, maybe a history of medication as well too, that was also impacting the microbiome, nervous system, not super regulated, could have been a history of also massive stress or little T or big T trauma that was going on. And you just keep putting the cap on it and moving forward and moving forward and moving forward. And what starts to happen behind the scenes is our bodies are brilliant at being able to adapt to stress and to manage and keep us healthy and keep us whole. But what starts to happen slowly behind the scenes is all those signs and symptoms that we talked about before, right? The not sleeping, the anxiety, the physical, the mental, emotional, all of that. Please pay attention. Please pay attention. Please pay attention. Trying to help us understand something behind the scenes is going on. This happens long enough now in the body. It's like, oh gosh, like you're still ingesting the things that are irritating me. Life is still irritating me. And now your immune system starts to get worn down and we start to actually not just go and attack foreign invaders, viruses, bacteria, and pathogen that aren't supposed to be there. The immune system starts to get confused and now actually starts to launch and attack your own healthy tissue. And now your own body, your own immune system is starting to attack and break down your own body. Hashimoto's, it specifically goes after thyroid tissue. You know, rheumatoid, it's going after your joints. Irritable bowel disease and all the different digestive issues, it's going after, you know, the lining of the gut, the GI system. There's all different things going on. And so what's really frustrating is literally all we need to be doing is ordering four more tests and a complete thyroid panel is gonna run you about $105 in Canada. Four tests from the same vial of blood they took that they measured the TSH in, $105. And that's the difference between someone suffering for decades or four years like your mom and someone finding out the answer in two weeks. And the problem with the 16 year old is that, okay, so that is a very elevated TSH. But can you please tell me what her free T4 is, her free T3, her reverse T3, and did you go and test that 16-year-old's antibodies? Because if that young girl has, here's the thing, TSH, when, they, when it's elevated and they give you medication, in Canada, it's almost always going to be synthroid level thyroxine. So they're going to give her pure T4. There's no T3. Well, T3 is the metabolically active form of the thyroid hormone. So if her issue is not, and the only way we know what we really need is you have to measure the T4 and the T3 to know, or the T3, does she have enough T4? If her T4 is sitting between 14 and 17, you know, maybe even 18 and it's robust and great, but her T3 is what's sitting low, this young girl has a conversion issue. Where does the conversion happen? In her liver and her gut. If she has a conversion issue and she also has antibodies, we go to the liver and the gut. So now how we're gonna support this 16 year old? Because with levels that high, I guarantee you her mood and her emotions, she probably feels like she's manic or bipolar because of how that's going to impact. Brain fog, headache, can't focus. She's 16, she's going through tons of hormonal changes in her body. If she's on the pill, that's already dampening because that same gland that is secreting that TSH is also what's responsible for us ovulating as women. So there's this whole storm happening behind the scenes that when you go to only a medical doctor and you get told the one thing, it's fractional health as opposed to functional health. So for that mom of that 16 year old, she can start on the medication, absolutely. Let's not tell her this is gonna be a lifelong thing because we don't know. And even if it is, there are a bunch of other things we need to saddle up to this young girl for her to be doing so that her body can A, utilize the medication, and B, we can start to naturally support the inflammation that's going on behind the scenes. Because at the end of the day, any diagnosis is inflammation. Yeah, that's huge, right? 
great information nailing down that the the, uh, the thyroid um, and that that's a big one for a lot of women is a thyroid and I didn't get my first thyroid test until I was probably like in my mid 40s. But um, why would you even thought beforehand because if you're thinking mid 40s it's like if we see here's the important thing about conversations. Yeah. If a woman doesn't hear this this is not going to be on news. This is most likely not going to be in the feed she's following on her Instagram feed. It's definitely not going to be in the magazine that she's picking up. And it is a hundred percent not going to be in any of the marketing and advertising telling her that her body is broken and not what it should be. They're not going to be talking about thyroid testing. It's going to be diets, exercise, it, but it's not going to be educating her. So the reason now more women are asking for the test is because they're tuning in to podcasts like this and hearing, wait a second, all these things you just described, I am checking off every frigging box and I've been told that I am fine. So this is about empowering us to go into these appointments and I'll tell you what is going to happen. You're going to go in now, if you've never had a full gamut run for the thyroid, and we actually have on, I have it as a free resource on my website at jenpike.com. And we have a whole list of all the, the, what our definition for a woman of full blood testing is. You can download the list so you know what to go in and you could print it and you could walk in and you'd say, I would actually really like to have all of these done. Now, if you've never had comprehensive blood work done, your doctor should agree to that because this would be like a comprehensive physical. Okay. If that doesn't work, because oftentimes they'll say we're not allowed to, it's actually a lie. They can hundred percent do it. Um, you can also offer to pay out of pocket. You just say, I don't need it covered. I'll pay it out of pocket. I just need you to write it on the requisition so I can go to the lab. If that doesn't work, you need to go and work with a functional practitioner. So we have functional practitioners in our women's wellness clinic. If you have a naturopath that you work with, a nurse practitioner can also do this for you. You don't have to go to an ND. It can be an NP, a nurse practitioner. These things can be covered in your extended benefits or you pay out of pocket to get these answers. Because the reality is, is that, you know, we are willing to pinch our pennies in the areas of our life that we think should be covered or aren't a priority so that we can go and afford to buy the material thing or whatever it might be. And we look at these as like, you know, wants versus needs, but for the person who has been suffering for so long, for the mom who's watching her daughter suffer for honestly, even a week is too much as a mom to witness. And for that woman who is just like, I'm so tired of being told everything is fine that investment you're going to make whether it's a hundred dollars it's a few hundred maybe it's a few thousand dollars depending on some of the things we talk about could literally give you a brand new lease on life yeah i agree 100 percent i'll be honest like i never really invested in myself for so many years as a woman the 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 money that came in was all about the kids or the mortgage or Mm -hmm. there wasn't a lot of extra so I totally get where you're saying like it was wasn't until like I couldn't get off the couch like it was almost like too late and I had to backtrack Um, another big test that really was a game changer for me and I've had it twice I'm due to probably have another one is the Dutch hormone panel Mm -hmm. I think I had it at 47. So Mm -hmm. that definitely showed up as me being estrogen dominant, definitely a motivator to stop the chemicals because of my breast health and the fibroids that I had in my breasts and the risk of breast cancer. But let's dive in a little bit about that one, because I know you even teach um, health professionals how Mm -hmm. to read, you know, the test and, and, and bring it into your practice. And I know it's a big test that you guys use in your program. Yeah. So with hormone testing, um, we'll test serum as well, which means blood. So we will test estradiol, progesterone, uh, testosterone, DHEA, FSH, and LH. And the timing of your testing in blood and in urine, which is the Dutch that we'll talk about is really important. Now, if you have, this is what gets tricky when you're in perimenopause and menopause. So if you have a a regular cycle, which a regular cycle can be anywhere from 23 to 35 days, what is regular is that it's regular for you. So you have a rhythm. 
And we ideally want to be testing, especially for things like our progesterone. This is the most important one, either five to seven days after we've ovulated or five to seven days before your period, your bleed is going to start. So this is why tracking your cycle and having cycle awareness is so important. Okay. And that is free to do. When we're looking at something like um, the Dutch, Dutch is an acronym. It stands for Dried Urinary Test for Comprehensive Hormones. And so what we're looking at here is we are looking at your three different types of estrogen. We have many different types. We test three. So we test estrone, which is E1, which when we go into menopause and we're postmenopausal, majority of the estrogen present in our bodies is typically going to be estrone. And that is actually found more in our adipose tissue and our fat. Then we have E2, which is estradiol that is predominantly produced in the ovaries, a little bit by the adrenals. Um, and there's other visceral organs as well too, like a little bit by the liver, but ovaries are the main show. And then we have E3, which is estriol. Now estriol is typically only elevated if you are pregnant or in a woman who is not filtering and detoxing her estrogens healthfully and in the optimal way. And so when we look at the amount of estrogen that you have, you have something called first pass and second pass or phase one and phase two detox. When you get blood work done, you'll see the hormone levels, but it doesn't tell us what your body does at, with them at that point. So we make a hormone, we use a hormone, and then your body has a tagging system. Just like if you go and put your garbage bin, recycling bin, your green bin, and your yard waste outside, that's like a tagging system. Your body has a tagging system where it's like healthy estrogen, not so healthy estrogen, get out of dodge, like get this out of the system. And so in our bodies, they're referred to as a 16 of four and a two pathway. When we're working with women who have the fibrocystic breast, a lot of breast tenderness, um, you know, they're like my, my boobs like grow a size when I ovulate and when I have my period, they're always tender, lots of issues around that. We'll oftentimes see that 16 elevated um, and then we'll see the four elevated and the four is known as our carcinogenic pathway. It's a quinone pathway, which means it's like, you know, we have this pathway called the two pathway that is green for go and get out. It is like the most direct pathway for your body to start to break down your estrogens to, you know, make it water soluble. Our body uses minerals and other nutrients to neutralize it. So it's not reactive. It's not going to cause any issues and we can just filter it and we can pack it up and ship it out via our poop a little bit and pee, but most of it's going out through our stool. What happens is if your body doesn't have like any of the right systems, any of the right minerals, the nutrients, the gut health, the liver health, all of that, to shuttle each of these where they need to go into the tagging, things get lost in transaction. And now you can have an accumulation in the unhealthy pathways that are responsible for cyst, fibroids, polyps, and um, cancer. Right. So when we're talking about like uh, reproductive cancers, so breast cancer, we're talking about cervical, uterine, ovarian, all of these. Now, the test is not diagnosing that someone has cancer or any of these things going on, but it is showing us your propensity and your vulnerability based on how your body is eliminating or not these hormones. Your phase two detoxification, which is now after all those things I just said have happened, is essentially like you've put your order in. Now your body has received it. Your body has to go and pack up and ship your order out. So it takes all the broken down hormones, packs everything up, wraps it in bubble wrap, puts a bow around it, keeps it tight and tidy. Nothing's going to get out or get broken, ships it to the bowels where we are going to excrete all of that waste out. Nine out of 10 women have digestive issues, don't have regular bowel movements, don't have healthy bowel movements, have to drink coffee in order to poop, can't poop when they're on holidays. You know, it's either a mucky mess or it's, you know, deer scat. And it's like pellet poop that's happening. Um, they need to have magnesium citrate, the comms powder in order to poo. It's a struggle for women. If your bowel movements are a struggle and your gut is a struggle, it means your detoxification and elimination is a struggle. What else we're going to see inside of the Dutch is we're going to see your progesterone levels, but how you metabolize your progesterone. So for the woman who has extreme PMS, who has PMDD, who says in the last half of her cycle, I feel like I'm losing my mind. I, I, I listen, I have worked with women who it is so severe. They have suicidal ideation 
in those two weeks before their period. It is very severe. This is not PMS, this is PMDD. And you can see in tests like this, if this woman has a preference for A or B pregnenidol, and it is how our neurotransmitters, things specifically like GABA cross that blood brain barrier, and progesterone is a calming hormone. It is what is gonna ground us. This is why when women go into menopause and we're not ovulating anymore, which if we don't ovulate, we are not producing progesterone. Ovulation is the main event in order for the whole rhythm and cycle and that equilibrium to happen. This is why so many women will start to feel a little bit unhinged coming into menopause because it is like the rug has been pulled out from underneath them. And if that same woman didn't have supported adrenals, which anytime you hear adrenals, you automatically need to hear nervous system because our adrenals and our nervous system, they're, they're in a deep relationship together. There's no separating of the two. And so that's also why coming into menopause, most women at the age of 40 ish in their life and in their fifties, it's been a life of career, kids, family, pets, everyone else. And now their body, which needs this period of time to transition in this beautiful phase of menopause is like, I am tired. I am spent. I am burnt. I am fried. I don't have anything left. But the body's like, uh, but wait a sec, all these core hormones that you've had your whole life to support you, they like they just had their finale. They're done. They're leaving the stage. What, what do you mean you don't have anything left to give? And this is typically where we'll see the onset of the thyroid issues. Uh, you know, thyroid crashes, adrenals crash, the hormones are plummeting, and now this woman is just struggling on every level. And it doesn't need to be that way. That's not that is not the destiny that we have. It's just unfortunately a common reality because we're not educated. We don't get educated until we can't get off up off the ground. Right. Absolutely. So, I mean, think about what was it almost eight years ago when I picked up the phone and asked you, I need help, Jen, I can't mm -hmm. get off the couch. And that's where mm -hmm. we started, right? Was getting yeah. that you were, I think, the first mentor of mine to give me permission to rest and to heal. And yeah. I didn't even know what that meant. Right. I didn't even know what that meant. So I, there's going to be a lot of women that I think this will really land to go. That's that's me, right? Yeah. Um, it's a very emotional when you start to tell a woman it's okay to slow down. It's okay to have a rest. It's okay to um, go to bed early. It's okay to, you know, do the self care because they've never, never had mentors to show them how to do it. And they're just passing the baton. And that's what I see in a lot of the menopause women that I've been coaching is they're like, I don't even know what that means, Nicole, when you say mm -hmm. slow down. So mm -hmm. I'm that you're really, this message is, I think, really landing for me, but also for a lot of women is giving yourself permission. It is massive. And it's important for other women to support other women in the permission slip. It, it's crazy that we have to have that and hear it, but we are, it is so ingrained in us, especially in the generation of women that right now are in the ages of 30 to 60 years old of, we, we fought for so many of the rights and opportunities to not just have a seat at the table, but to build careers and have children and to have abundance and to be able to use our voice and, 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 you know, there's so many messages out there that I think have the intention of being positive, but depending on the hands in which the message ends up in can be really destructive, which is the constant message of you can do hard things. All I see around me is women doing hard things. I intentionally choose not to remind women of that and use the languaging because the women who come to me are the ones where I need to say, I am not questioning your ability to do anything hard. What I am not seeing is you do anything the opposite of hard. Where is the rest? Where is the recovery? Where are your boundaries? Where, where are you? Where are you? Show me where you are. So it's like, you know, even when we talk about things like our schedule, right? Everybody will, you know, look at my life or look at my schedule and say, oh, it's so full and busy. 
And I'm like, it's not. The reason it takes so long for me to say yes to something or book something is because I only allow for such a small amount to be booked into my life in a week that, you know, instead of 40 hours in a week, I only create 40 hours in a month. So it's, and we're just not used to it. And the reason I got there is because I was also on the couch and couldn't get up. It just happened to me a decade before most of the women, because I had just been plowing myself into a smithereen as a young mom and a businesswoman. And I was looking around and I was like, I, I don't see, like, can someone give me permission, please? And it got to the point where my body was like, oh, you need permission? Perfect. We'll just slam your ass down on the couch for a few days and make it impossible for you to move forward this way. And, and that was it for me. So coming back to the Dutch, we do see your adrenal pattern. So we measure your 24 hour cortisol, which is called your diurnal pattern. We can understand and see how well your adrenals are doing at producing cortisol, but also how you utilize it. Are you are you keeping it active? Are you clearing it really quickly? Are you deactivating it? It also tracks it over a 24 hour period of time to understand, you know, oh, fascinating. You tell me you crash in the afternoon. Look at right here. And this is the, the empowering piece of the testing is a good practitioner is going to give you a copy and pull it up and show it to you and teach you your results, walk you through it all step by step and not from a science language, but like for you to, this is like a storybook of you. And what's amazing, you'll see women get it is they're like, oh my gosh, that is me. That is me. That is, yes, yes, yes. And so we look at that. We look at testosterone. We look at DHEA. So we're looking at your androgens as well, too. A lot of women in blood work, their adrenals and even their thyroid could show healthy, but then we measure your um, sulfated version uh, or form of DHEA. And if it's really low, um, we have to ask a deeper question of why, if it's really elevated, like inflammation is a big trigger for the sulfation of DHA in our bodies. We also look at organic acids and we look at neurotransmitters. So it is very comprehensive for the woman who doesn't have a regular cycle, who's perimenopausal, who is like in the tail end where she's like, I do not know when a period is going to appear, um, or she's postmenopausal, then this is where at one of two things, either the very perimenopausal woman where it's all over the place, you can add on cycle mapping to your Dutch. So you can urinate on those filter strips every single day so that we can actually see, are you having estrogen peaks and where are you having the fall? Where is the progesterone and the luteinizing hormone surging? Where is the fall? So we can map it out that way. Um, for women who there's uh, you know a lot of adrenal struggle, you can also add a saliva test to your Dutch test and it will measure what's called your cortisol awakening response. I'm always cognizant of women um like if I'm working with a woman like say for instance Nicole I can't get off the couch in the way you describe I do not need to spend have you spend extra money to go and run that test I, we can go put your money into your food your protocols two days off of work a month as opposed to testing what is very obvious. Yeah. Um, so when you're postmenopausal, like I work with a lot of women who don't bleed anymore, I will decrease the frequency of how often we test Dutch unless she's on bioidentical hormones. Because using a Dutch in conjunction with your bioidentical hormones is a very important way to know how are you utilizing the hormones and how are you metabolizing them. So that's an important tool to use. The other test that is really important when we're talking about hormonal health, if the woman also has a lot of inflammation, a lot of gut stuff, skin issues, mood issues, is running a GI map and actually testing her stool, her fecal matter. There's a lot that we can be informed. Remember that detoxification, like what we pass and eliminate, it, it's gold. Like it is telling us so much information. We can also do a full mineral analysis by testing hair and looking at hair tissue mineral analysis to understand what's going on from a mineral level, heavy metals. Um, there are a lot of different functional tests. So that's where working with a practitioner to have an initial session first so that you can just like barf it all out there. Like, this is how I'm feeling. This is how long it's been going on for. This is how I desire to feel. Where do I start? 
And, you know, for us as a company and for me, that was really the impetus of creating the Simplicity Women's Wellness Clinic, which we launched a couple of months ago. I've been teaching the Hormone Project for seven years, um, which is like it's hormone university to me and it's my baby. And, and I teach that every single week and I have for seven years now. Um, and this is really where high level education for women meets functional testing and one to one session and being part of a group. So in the hormone project, you're working with a functional health practitioner. It's either a functional medicine practitioner, an ND and NP, um, you know, menopause special, like we have a whole roster of clinicians. And so you're having the one to one. We're shipping you your functional test. We're coaching you through additional testing to work with your doctor because it is about having an integrative team, right? So it's like, it's very difficult to ever find one person who's going to know it all. Like that doesn't really exist. So we want to build you an integrative team. It's not about good, bad, and this. No, there is a beautiful way to work with your family doctor and your PCP or primary care practitioner. Sometimes you just don't know the languaging. And you need to have a backup squad, right? So we will run labs. Um, we use we have a, a company that is across Canada for women who can't get the testing through their doctor. So you pay out of pocket. We coordinate it for you. We send you the requisition. You go to your local blood lab and you get the draw done, and we get the results back and we take you through it. We do it in the U.S. We do it all over the world. Um, you know, we even just we were sending tests out to Dominican Republic last week. We're sending them to Australia, to New Zealand. So there is a way. It just doesn't typically live in your doctor's office. I love it. I saw your um, launch of your wellness clinic a couple months ago. I was like cheering for you. I was so excited. I was like, oh my gosh, this is exactly what the world needs. It's very unique. It's it's very mm -hmm. um, uh, required in today's you know world. And so I was like, I got it. It's taken me a while to get Jen Pike on because, as you said, she's got boundaries and. <laughs> Um, and, and only 10 hours a week. So it's taken us this long to get um, coordinated to be on here to have that conversation. But Jen, I just want to summarize real quickly a few of the things that I got from our conversation today. You know, you talked about the woman coming out of the doctor's office and, you know, not giving up, knowing that there's some questions that you need to answer. So go back, listen to this podcast again, write those questions down that Jen, you know, um, mentioned in the beginning, you know, which is, you know, how are you truly feeling, you know, getting connected to the foods that you're eating, getting connected to the self care. And then um, I love that you introduce people to your website that they can go on and they can print out those um, lab tests so that they can bring it to the doctor and see how open the doctor is. And if the doctor is open, great, congratulations, you've got a great doctor. <laughs> if they're not so open and resisting it, then yes, there are definitely other options. I love that Jen has introduced you to her new wellness clinic. Um, so you can go onto her website, you can follow her on Instagram um, so that you could reach out and um, get connected to one of her coaches so that they can set up and see what your needs are. And of course she has um, the beautiful hormone project that she has been running for seven years that I know a lot of people that have gone through that beautiful program to help them get their health on track. Jen, I just wanna say thank you so much. You and I could talk and talk and talk, but I know we are running out of time here. Um, thank you for sharing your expertise and knowledge. And I know um, my followers will really appreciate this valuable information. Um, you give hope to so many women who have given up. And uh, I always say that, you know, these, these next, you know, the next chapter should and could be your best. You know, mm -hmm. as the kids grow up and you have more time freedom and, and more time to play, we want you to feel kick ass. We want you yeah. to have the energy and the vitality and the confidence. And, um, you know, practitioners like Jen Pike and her team um, give hope to women so that this truly can be our best chapter. So thanks for being such a beautiful role model in the in the world of hormones to so many women. Uh, well, thank you. And thanks for hosting podcasts like this, because. You know, it's like, this is where the free information lies. And this is really like the call to action is there's so many places, you know, you can get the free info here, master classes, all those kind of things, and then start to really ask yourself, you know, this would be my final message to all of you today is, you know, if you, if you really want to think about how to set your health up for the future, moving forward, you have to understand that it is an investment. And it's an investment in your wisdom, 
in your time, in the brilliance of your body. And there's going to be some cost associated with that. So it's like, make it a priority because you deserve it. And, uh, you know, like I said, I'm in my forties and I feel so, I feel better in my forties than I ever did in any of the other decades of my life. And I'm so excited for what's coming forward with all my silvers. (laughs) (laughs) All the wisdom. Exactly. All the silvers. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Jen. Thank you. Thank you for listening to another great episode of women in our uh, midlife wanting to really own life. Thank you. I want to say thank you for listening to today's episode. If this message landed for you, make sure to leave a review and tag me, Nicole Scott at Gorgeous Gray Movement, and make sure to share with your friends. You can head over to my free Facebook community, Gorgeous Gray Movement, or subscribe to my YouTube channel for more inspiring interviews. If you are still struggling and need additional support, you can take a look at my website, nicolescott.ca, and learn more about my new menopause reset program that I'm so excited for. Until next time, ladies, be well and own your sparkle.